What is going on guys, MJ2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the high grade Gundam H2 Normal from Gundam Age, the second generation Gundam of the H system. It demonstrated abilities that surpassed X rounder machines after Asmo Asano got over his jealousy and turned the tide of war. And many thanks to Alto Blue for donating the funds to make this review possible, so a big shout out to them. Continuing on the theme of cheap yet well engineered, only 6 runners and a tiny sticker sheet constitute the contents of this kit. As for the build, it's a bit more involved than the H1 but remains simple in construction nonetheless. The only thing to watch out for is that the blue and grey pieces can still easily stress if not cut out carefully. Otherwise, the structure is similar to the H1 with a couple of fresh bits here and there. Though if I sound a bit partial, it's because the H2 normal is the very kit that introduced me to Gunpla property, so I apologize if any bias slips through. And right out of the box, the high grade Gundam H2 normal looks astounding. Right out the gate, it screams speed with its overall design. And while I am a fan of the core H2 design, especially for that rear spoiler for our backpack, I am so so on the shoulder wings as they don't serve any practical purpose on the gunpla except for extra flash. There are barely any faults to the build itself other than the seam lines of the forearms and the blue bits on the wings, and maybe the initial safety flags on the binders. There is also no real point in showing this thing without stickers as they are isolated to the eyes, head sensors, dark green detail beside the head crest, the H symbol, and the black bits inside of the yellow pieces, all of which do a good job in filling in the necessary details while not looking absolutely jarring, which demonstrates the top notch color separation of the kit. There are minor details that you need to paint in for this 13.5cm transformer, they are not horribly necessary and the kit can be displayed right out of the box, with a light touch of panel lining to bring out the somewhat minimal amount of detail there. For articulation, the head is on the very flexible double polycap ball joints, so it can look anywhere you want it to. The arms can swing laterally, vertically, as well as rotate. There's a perpendicular arm raise after you lift up the shoulder flap, bicep rotation, double jointed elbows, and ball jointed wrists. The arm mounted wings can also swivel at the shoulder, while flapping in and out, and rotating at the base as well as flare out if you cut off the peg inside. There is no crunching because of the transformation mechanic, but the waist can rotate all the way. All of the skirt armor can move, the legs can swivel laterally, as well as do the funky dance. And with the moving skirts, full front and side splits can be achieved. There is a thigh swivel, double jointed knee, hinged ankle armor, hinged and ball jointed feet that can achieve a wide degree of movement, and a moving toe for the transformation. Altogether, the Gundam H2 has an acrobatic range of movement with the solid structure, while the sacrifices made for the transformation doesn't affect it much. However, the binders do sometimes get in the way and will make for some dodgy poses, so do keep that in mind. For accessories, the H2 has a pair of holding hands, a left side only fist, and open hand. However, the most notable addition is the included display base. While it has no adjustment points apart from the arm being able to rotate, the base has mounting points to store the hands, crotch plug, and transformation block. So everything but the beams can be stored in one spot, which is life-saving to say the least. Moving on to the weapons, the beam saber stored in the basket can work with the included SB9 beams. They offer the standard beam saber functionality, but only the long effect parts are included. Next is the shield, which is small to avoid obstruction during combat. It plugs onto the arm guard with a peg, and can be adjusted with a swivel. You can also mount it onto the side by readjusting the arm guard. The rifle takes the form of the Hyper Dots rifle, and I really like the sleek design and the fact that it features more colors than just the grey. It also has a sticker for the underslung scope, and you can slide the bottom piece down to slip it into the hand, before closing it back up to securely lock the rifle in place. And it does look quite powerful, especially in the pose. But if you do not want to use it, it can be plugged onto the basket for storage. Finally, you can transform the H2 into its strider form with the aforementioned transformation block. It's a simple process that involves removing the limbs, extending the torso mechanic and folding the waist back, plugging the basket into the holes on the back, dropping the head, folding the side skirts forward and downward, flipping down the shoulder armor, 
adjusting the wings, activating the reverse knees, and pointing the toes down before swapping them onto the block. Reversing the removable panel of the rifle and raising up its handle before reattaching the limbs to the body and the rifle onto the chest to form the nose cone. The end result is a streamlined fighter mode and despite the simple process, it is barely recognizable from its mobile suit form as it is hard to bust the disguise. Additional stickers for the shoulder Vulcans are revealed in this form, but they don't look too bad. Overall, this is an awesome looking flight form that is not too tedious to achieve and hard to bust. Just like its father unit, the high grade Gundam Age 2 Normal is a strongly recommended kit, regardless of where you are at in model building. It looks sharp with accurate proportions, engineered well with minimal stickers or flaws, has unique looking weapons, and a decently wide set of gimmicks, all packed into a beginner friendly build. Despite the existence of the double bullets, the dark hound, or even the magnum, all with more features than the normal, I will argue that the normal stands toe to toe with its other variants, but of course that depends on who you're asking. Nostalgic bias notwithstanding, the high grade Gundam Age 2 really earned its place in my heart, largely thanks to the presentation and the fun to be had for its value. And that's all for me, thank you for watching, drop a like and comment if you did enjoy the video, subscribe for more content like this, and feel free to follow me on social media with the links down below. That said, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.